Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Violet and the pup that you see on the screen is my service dog, Atlas. Um, if you watched our previous video, you'll know that these next few videos is going to be part of a mini-series uh, kind of documenting what I'm doing to help prepare Atlas to go to Universal Studios in Orlando. Um, so for this trip, we decided to go to our local like little pavilion area. Um, this is actually like a giant outdoor shopping area and then along with it, some parts of it are like a pavilion. They have like some little thrill rides and a ferris wheel, uh, that kind of thing. So I figured it was the closest that we could get <laughs> to the kind of environment that Universal is. Um, I am now editing this from the future. We've already done our trip to Universal and everything. And I just want to say, like, you can prepare your dog as much as you can for a type of situation. Um, try and, you know, prepare ahead of time to simulate environments, but really there is no way to do that other than just to go and into those environments with your dog and train through it um and yeah it, <laughs> it was definitely an experience but i don't want to spoil anything and um the trip went well the trip went really really well but um yeah i just wanted to kind of hop on and say that this is part of the mini series and coming from the future now i do want to uh, preface all of this with you can prepare your dog as much as you can for a situation but sometimes the only thing you can do is just go into that situation and train right then and there um, I do feel like that this did help a little bit training wise to prepare him for that kind of environment especially around like thrill rides and you know screaming and that kind of thing but as far as something as monumental as a theme park this did not prepare him for that um no amount of <laughs> preparing could have prepared either of us for a theme park of that magnitude so yeah i just wanted to preface it with that and let's get into the video so right here he gets a little distracted by the ride that is just off screen a little bit it's like a little go-kart ride um to my right <laughs> um and then a little bit ahead of us to the left are like uh teacups kind of he got a little distracted walked ahead of me um i verbally corrected him and then i put him back in the place he should be um something i do want to mention is that this day wasn't really hot it was just very sunny um we checked the ground multiple times throughout this outing and the ground was fine it was just warm it wasn't hot by any means um we could comfortably set our hands on the pavement um the back of our hands on the pavement for more than 10 seconds so um and anytime that we stopped to do something like this usually i try to do it in the shade but this was still pretty early on in the day so it wasn't hot at all and there was a nice breeze it was actually a pretty nice day um and here i'm just rewarding for any kind of eye contact with me and if he you know looks off to the side for a little bit gets distracted by something and then gives his attention back to me like you just saw here then i treat him i reward him and praise him um i'm just trying to put an emphasis on me <laughs> i'm the most important thing in the room and when you pay attention to me you get yummy cheese and hot dogs um and he's doing pretty well for his first time in this type of scenario and it was very busy this day because it was so nice and it was right around spring break i think i think this was like the end of march so um yeah kind of busy very nice out kind of an ideal day to go training um so yeah he does pretty well and we end up moving on to more intense rides and yeah um here i'm just waiting for the ride to start again that way i can see how he reacts to it and try to do some more engagement exercises with him and here we are walking to more of like a thrill ride as opposed to a kitty ride um, this is one of these rides that um, put you up in the air and then they drop suddenly um, so I was kind of counting on the sounds of the hydraulics um, and <laughs> people screaming to you know 
desensitize him to that and teach him some engagement exercises that way. Um, but alas, not a lot of people were screaming for some reason on this ride, um, which is kind of weird. I feel like with these rides, there's always people screaming, but these people were unfeeling evidently and there was very little screams to be heard. <laughs> um, which was fine, I guess. I mean, we still utilized the sound of the hydraulics and like the air compressor from the ride itself to train with and also the very loud bassy sounds that it makes. And um, because it is such a big ride and a big machine, it does kind of rumble the ground a little bit. So us being nearby was good desensitization to uh, feeling ground movement. So it wasn't all lost, but this is what we're doing here. And he's very focused. He's being such a good boy. Um, he kind of knows the drill and that in all scenarios, he should pay attention to me. And there he's showing a little interest and he looks right back at me, gets his treat, kind of looks around a little to survey his environment, which is fine. You know, it's okay to be curious, but he always puts his focus back on me and he did so good this outing. After that, we decided to walk across the way um, and walk through all of the shops to get to the other side of the pavilion. Um, the, the pavilion here is like split into two different areas that you have to walk to, so that's what we decided to do. But it was no big deal to me because it served as healing practice and engagement and working in an outdoor area, um, which is something that I greatly overlooked in his training. We mainly focused on working indoors and I feel like I used outdoors as, you know, his way to decompress and everything, but never really thought to work in an outdoor shopping area or really focus on um, proofing his tasks outdoors and proofing his heel outdoors completely. So um, it was good practice for that and he did really well. So um, that served. <laughs> A good purpose too so here we are making it to the other side of the pavilion um, there are a lot more thrill rides on this side i feel like the other side was very much so more like for children <laughs> kind of this was more so for adults there's a lot of a lot more intense rides here so um kind of just what we were looking for and here he's really taking notice in all of the screams and excitement people are walking all about, not really paying attention, kids are screaming, running around, um, and here he kind of loses his focus, so I do a little bit of engagement, I walk backwards, and he knows he has to walk back to me, and then I do a little bit of movement with him, have him do a spin, and then we walk back into a heel just to get his engagement back, and here you can see him focusing much better after that. Um, and there's a spill on the ground, which he ignores beautifully. And we're just trying to walk to um, this one ride that's kind of like the adult version of that other ride that had cars. Uh, they go around in circles and there's also somebody that talks in a microphone overhead, which is something that he hasn't experienced before. So I wanted him to get used to that as well. Um, and here I'm just doing a lot of high reward and high rate of reward high praise um just to let him know that he's doing good and his dad gives him a pet to let him know he's doing good After spending some time around this ride with it on and me just rewarding him for his focus, um, I end up trying to do some task practice while outdoors. And here you can see I start doing a behavior interruption on my leg. Um, it is very um, unnoticeable, <laughs> uh, which is what I was going for. And he catches it. Um, he does, however, jump on me, and he's not supposed to jump with that interruption. He's just supposed to get in the way of my hand to prevent me from doing any more harm or prevent me from harming myself in general. The only time he's supposed to jump like that with a behavior interruption is if I'm doing it on my arm or if I'm hitting my head. Um, 
So I keep doing it and he finally does the right thing and starts to put his head in the way of my arm. Um, and I just have, you know, some little nitpicky things like that for a reason, um, just for my own sake so I don't get confused in the moment because if I am in an episode, I need things to be very clear. So yeah, um, once he gets that correct, um, we keep doing some more tasks. I end up dropping the leash at some point, having him bring it, um, and that is to prevent me from getting dizzy and to help with pain management as well. And this is where I decide to do some heel practice around this ride, um, some extra distraction work. And here he does wonderfully at first, and then at some point I notice that he isn't completely focused because when I do make these outer turns, he kind of lags behind and isn't completely focusing on me. So at some point I start using a lure instead to really help solidify in his mind that he should always be right at my side, um, whether I turn inward or outward. Yep. So right here he turns a bit better, it's still a little laggy. And I keep doing some more turns. His focus starts to get a lot better, especially after I start to lure. I start to pick up my pace as well to keep his focus on me too, just to keep it more interesting. And here he gets a little better. Um, and at this point, I believe the person um, that talks in the microphone for this ride was talking on the microphone overhead. So it was just an added extra element of distraction. Um, and here you can see he got a little distracted. I lured him back and he starts healing a lot better. So we ended up walking towards this ride. Um, people lay on their stomachs and it kind of like paraglides them kind of almost um, I sped this up two times um, but you can see that there's a lot of people walking by um, kids even running past us so he has to ignore them um, just a lot of good distraction training going on here in this video um, I mean a lot was going on there was a lot of people um, kids running back and forth and here he does his first um, medical alert and I gauge how I'm feeling here and he keeps alerting and this part of the video is only a couple minutes because I could only last a couple of more minutes but I wanted to push through because this was a really good area for training and this is me checking to make sure that you know, he's right, um, and he was right because this episode was slowly escalating, um, and I only had so much time, but I wanted to use that time for training, um, and here he does a really good job keeping his focus on me because he's trying to make sure that I'm okay, um, he's keeping a gauge on me, um, and yeah, lots of kids running by, so really good distraction training. Um, and then finally, towards the end of this clip, you will see um, him alert one last time, and that's when I finally listen to him. But that in itself is good for training and proofing that task. Um, I was not expecting him to be able to do a medical alert in this type of scenario considering how we've never been in this scenario before and there's a lot going on i was not expecting that of him i was expecting him to do his simpler tasks like behavior interruption blocking as you can see um creating space in the crowd that kind of thing i was not expecting him to do a medical alert um and medical alerts at least in my opinion are hard to do um especially the more distracting an area is so i I was trying to keep a realistic um, gauge on him as far as what I was going to expect him to do. So 
I'm very proud of him for being able to do a medical alert in this type of environment, especially being around it for the first time. Keeping such an amazing focus on me to be able to do that is just incredible and I wasn't expecting it. I do some more engagement training and like I said, he alerts one last time and I finally listen to him and that's when we move on for a bit. I have him do deep pressure therapy, we go in some shade, um, get some water, that kind of stuff, just try and de-escalate the medical episode that is happening. <laughs> and I have him do some more block because I start to feel hypervigilant in this crowd and it helps greatly. And yeah, I'll move on. <laughs> Something I wanna mention is that anytime I'm having any sort of episode, whether that be because of my psychiatric disabilities or because of my physical medical disabilities, I do not record those mostly because that is the last thing on my mind and I'm trying to get to a safe space, but also because of privacy. Having a service dog makes you feel like a spectacle as it is. So um, when you're in a medical episode, a lot of people don't read a room, so to speak, and you end up being gawked at as it is. So I just prefer not to record my medical episodes if I can help it. If I'm already recording, great, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to record a medical episode to show that. Just because in my opinion, for me, that is an invasion of my own privacy and medical history. So yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. I did not record that part. <laughs> After I was able to get the medical episode under control and Alice was able to help me, um, Alice's dad wanted some fried Oreos, so we got that and we decided to start walking to try and find some place so he can eat those. Um, this place was really busy, so um, I started to feel pretty hypervigilant, so at some point I start having him do crowd control, which is one of his off-leash tasks. There it is. Um, so occasionally you will see him walk around me and that is just to create space um, around me, especially in the back of me. It prevents people from walking right up behind me um, and it just helps prevent any psychiatric um, episode that I may have. Um, it greatly helps. Um, but it also served as proofing this task outdoors and around really crowded areas and he did wonderfully um, along with trying to find a place to sit um, walking through all the shops and walking outdoors for quite a while in this awfully shield position served as great training um, a great refresher for him as to what he's supposed to do and overall i'm really proud of how he did on this trip um, this training outing so really really proud of him he did a really good job and it was a pretty good indication of how he ended up doing in universal i will say too um so yeah he's just a good boy <laughs> After quite a bit of walking, we ended up just finding um, a little like brick ledge to sit on that had plants behind us. So it served as a nice uh, space between the public and us and Atlas knows to go underneath my legs whenever there is benched seating like that. Um, and he did so beautifully. And yeah, his dad ate his Oreos. There was a nice little view, a nice little hint as to where we were going across the way because there was Simpsons across the way. So I used that as a hint in our previous video, um, as you'll see right here. <laughs> and yeah, overall, it was a really good outing. On the way to the car, the rest of the way, I did have him off leash because he was tasking continually um, the whole rest of the way. And then a couple of days later, we actually came back to ride the Ferris wheel for the first time. I did not get any videos of that. However, I do have um, some photos, so I'll place some of those in. Going on the Ferris wheel, we didn't know what to expect since it was his first time on a ride. He didn't quite know how to step on, but then he quickly figured it out, so it wasn't a big deal. He figured out he had to hop over the little opening of the ledge because there was a little gap between the Ferris wheel and um, where the ground was. So once he figured that out, it wasn't a big deal. Um, he sat the whole time and eventually laid down even. So I just wanted to pop in and talk about that a little bit since I didn't get a video. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.